Back in January at CES, Asus showed up with three new Chromebooks that we were excited about across the board, honestly, the CX-5, the CM-5, and the CX-9. We've already reviewed the CX-5, and honestly, it's a great Chromebook that brings together a bunch of really good stuff. I've bought one for my family. It's just a great Chromebook. We have the CM5 now that is a very, very similar take on the Chromebook. We change out some of the internals. We change out some of the aesthetics. We've got it here in the office. Let's unbox it. But before we get into it, a big shout out to MediaTek for helping make our On The Run to 200K giveaway possible. We've partnered with them. If you didn't know, we are approaching 200,000 subscribers here on YouTube and MediaTek has been kind enough to partner with us to help us give away a bunch of prizes along the way. If you'd like some details on how to get entered to win some of this stuff that's all powered by MediaTek, head down to the link in the description and good luck. All right, so let's hop in the box. And just as we get with most Chromebooks, you know, it's a brown box. It's not that exciting. That's not really what you're here to see anyway, but we'll take a look to make sure there's not anything crazy in here. Some basic paperwork like you always get. We're gonna get a charger. It is the smaller wall wart variant of a USB type C charger. Great for charging smartphones and tablets and other things that you might have on your person at any given time. But let's get into the Chromebook. And ultimately, this device sets itself apart from the CX-5, again, that we've already reviewed, that is honestly pretty awesome, in two major ways. One is the aesthetic, the other is in the internal. So let's talk about and see this aesthetic, because this is me seeing it for the first, oh yeah, for the first time, man. Oh, that's really good looking. Uh, you know, it's weird, we don't get a ton of all black uh, metallic, I don't know what that finish is on this. It's kind of got that soft touch finish, just like the CX-5 did. Uh, powdery kind of look to it. We just don't get a lot of Chromebooks that look like this. And man, um, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that Joe's probably gonna have a hard time getting this thing on camera because it's even reflecting kind of strange in my eyes. But man, this is really slick looking. Um, around the bottom, yeah, same thing here. So aluminum lid, plastic bottom but the texture on both feels the same. So same, same as the CX-5 here, uh, some fan vents down here, speaker ports down here. Uh, the speakers on this thing are assuming they're gonna be great, uh, just like the CX-5 is and was in our review. And remember, again, these two share the exact same chassis. So when we're talking about screen and keyboard and trackpad, it's all basically the same with just a different paint job. So if you're really into this colorway and the way that this looks, and we're gonna see some accents around the side here in just a second. Yeah, as I prop this up here, you get these nice power and volume rocker buttons that are like that nice orange accent, which is just super slick looking. Uh, and then across the other side, micro SD card slot, full size HDMI, USB type C. I didn't say the ports over here. USB-C, A, and headphone microphone jack. So again, nothing different here. Uh, same hinges, same build, same feel, same weight. All those things are the same. Uh, so we're not doing anything radically different with this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and freely assume a 250 net screen here. Um, usually Chrome's boot screen uh, is, no, it's not quite full brightness. Yeah, so we're looking probably exact same panel here. Let me feel. Same keyboard, which is to say, great uh, backlit. But you do get, I'm gonna try to pop this thing up here, let it catch the light, the uh, ASDW keys. So if, if you play games, um, you're probably familiar with having those as your main control, so front, back, left, right. Um, this thing isn't gonna play games any better than any other Chromebook. Um, so don't let any of this kind of stuff fool you. It does have an AMD processor inside, but there, there's nothing about this that makes it a gaming Chromebook. Uh, the aesthetic maybe leans into that a little bit. Um, and, and at CES, when they announced it, we thought it was weird. It still is weird. Uh, it's it's still it's, it's a Chromebook. Uh, it'll play Stadia games just like every other Chromebook will. Um, so I'm not really sure what that's all about, but it's kind of cool looking. Uh, what sets this one apart is ultimately the way it looks and then what's inside of it. So what is inside this thing? Well, you're looking at a uh, AMD Ryzen 5, eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage. So this thing's gonna move around like a 10th gen Intel machine, like when it's plugged in, because we do have to mention the fact that when you don't plug these AMD chips in, 
they throttle and that's how they save battery life. They just throttle the processor down and we're seeing it in Windows devices, we're seeing it in Chromebooks. It's just a thing that AMD did on a base level with this particular chipset and not really sure why they did it, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna be reverted anytime soon. So when, when you're plugged in, you're gonna get the same kind of performance you would get on an Intel like i5 10th gen. But remember, we're comparing this device to the CX-5. That's the one that it's most similar to. And that device has an 11th gen processor in it. And plugged in or not, the CX-5 is gonna smoke this thing every day when it comes to base performance. All right, so Joe has informed me that the uh, screen is a bit blown out here. So hopefully that gets you down to where you can kind of see what's on the screen. Nothing shocking here. Again, we're dealing with a 1920 by 1080 panel. It's 15.6 inches. It's 250 nits of brightness, which as you can tell from our setting here is bright enough for most scenarios. And as I've had the CX-5 around my own house quite a bit now, I haven't really run into issues where, oh, the screen's not bright enough. Yes, I would love to see them put 300 nit screens in devices that are this thoughtfully built, but hopefully that happens sometime in the future. Ultimately, it's not gonna be a complete deal breaker unless you work next to a window or you just really like super, super bright screens. Another benefit that feels worth mentioning uh, with this particular device, and again with the CX-5, is that you got that numeric keypad over on the side. So they're really taking advantage of the bigger chassis and just giving you some more keys here. And it's just nice to have. Again, I've been using the CX-5 a little bit off and on now that I've got one at the house. And it's just nice when you got to input numbers for something to be able to reach over and just kind of feel that point. And especially if you're good with a number pad, you can just find that middle key with that little indention on it and know that you're right there and just really get numeric input down really quickly. All right, so now I am going to switch and get uh, logged in here real quick. So we'll, we'll make a quick cut. I just wanna hear the speakers on this because I said it in the intro and I wanna make sure I'm not lying to you. Uh, these should be the same excellent speakers that we got in the CX-5 that we're getting in the CM-5. All right, got all logged in and in the process of doing so, uh, obviously I had to use the keyboard trackpad. Same excellent keyboard from the CX-5, so no worries there, backlit and all that kind of stuff. But the trackpad, if you recall, I kind of had an issue with a, a bit of a floating trackpad on the CX-5 and I went in and fixed it myself. No issue here on this particular one. I'm not saying that every CM-5 is gonna be perfect or that every CX-5 was gonna be flawed in that way, but it is nice to feel this trackpad probably set up the way that Asus intended it to be. It feels great, really, really good and clicky, obviously all glass here. So the trackpad experience on this feels really, really fantastic. Anyway, so on to the audio, and just like we thought that these speakers sound incredible, just like the CX-5s do, Let's take a listen. Big, big Chromebook. And then we also got this one, the new Spin 713. And this is, just like it sounds, an upgrade of one of our favorite Spoken Chromebooks sounds from last fantastic. year. fantastic. So let's take a look. Last year in 20 so nice bass response, crispy highs, just really full, super, super happy with the speakers on this. And again, with the CX-5 as well, Asus did a really good job here of saying, hey, we put good speakers in here and actually doing it instead of putting them, putting it on a website and then showing up with some kind of okay speakers. So awesome there, you know, so on the outside, if you liked everything the CX-5 did and you didn't love the white, then you've got a better paint job here for a lot of people and something that looks honestly pretty awesome, feels pretty awesome to use, and just has a really cool aesthetic overall. As we wrap up, I do want to point out the processors inside again. I know I talked about them in the beginning, but it's important to note. If you're looking at this thing and loving the black exterior and loving the whole aesthetic of it and just kind of like, okay, this is, I, I didn't like the CX-5's look, but I love the way this thing looks. I do have to just warn you. I feel like it's like a public service thing. Like I've got to let you know that the AMD processors in here aren't deal breakers, but it's a letdown the way that they perform when not plugged into the wall. It's a shame that you're dropping 40% performance and you notice it, you feel it. Doesn't mean it's unusable. It doesn't mean that you can't get some stuff done when you're not you know, plugged into the wall, but you're gonna notice a performance drop off. And then when you combine that with the fact that even when plugged in, this thing is still 20 to 30% behind what's in the CX-5 and these 11th gen processors that are coming out now, it becomes a really difficult purchase decision because this thing's 599 for the Ryzen 5 8 128. It does drop down to 499 if you get down to the Ryzen 3 4 gig, 64 gig, but I can't imagine telling anybody to go get that particular device at that price when there's so many good Chromebooks out there in the five to $600 range. So. Uh, it's a bit of a head scratcher and the review process on this will be a little different because all I'm going to do is compare it to the CX-5 because that's 
exactly what it compares to. And apart from a paint job on the outside, I don't know how in the world that this thing could possibly compete with the other Chromebook that Asus chose to release right next to it. It's a, it's a strange choice, um, but it looks really, really nice and it feels really, really nice. And I like everything on the outside about it. Uh, just not sure how these insides are gonna perform, but guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. Head down there and hit that subscribe button as well. And make sure and click that notification, the little bell, if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos that are just like this one. Till next time, we'll see you.